Hope everybody's doing all right. This time around, let's take a look at a reproduction of a Remington bullet knife by Camillus, and this was their effort from 1989. Before I just pull the knife out of the box and we start looking at it, let me just put it in a, into context because I think it's important because it's a reproduction. So Remington started producing pocket knives back in 1920, and in September of 1922, they announced the first knives that would become known as bullet knives. They weren't really called bullet knives at the time, but they had this inlay of a 30 caliber bullet in the handles, and then they became known as bullet knives. Uh, the first ones introduced were two folding hunters, or large trappers, if you will. Their R1123, that was in bone handles, and their R1128 in Coco Bolo handles. Uh, they were top-of-the-line knives for Remington. They were highly regarded, but they didn't sell a lot of them because they were expensive for the time. But by 1930, they were producing 11 standard patterns of bullet knives. I think there may be, in total, were 13 different varieties because a couple of patterns, like the one I'm getting ready to show you, uh, you could get in two different handle treatments. So in 1939, Remington goes out of the knife business because they wanted to concentrate solely on the war effort, making ammunition and arms. 42 years later, Remington re-enters the knife uh, market by contracting with Camillus in 1982 to begin producing a series of bullet knife reproductions. And they started with the very first bullet knife, the R1123. So here's a, here's a picture of the original Remington bullet knife in bone. And then here's a picture or two of Camillus's reproductions. And you can see Camillus did a great job. I mean, they, the reproductions are true in size and form, uh, in markings. There are some differences in the materials. Uh, Camillus used stainless steel. The originals were carbon steel. Camillus used Delrin, unfortunately, uh, instead of the jigged bone. But they looked good. Uh, now, they've gone on to become pretty expensive and collectible themselves. By the way, if you can find an original bullet knife in pretty good condition, you're going to pay hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars for it. But these first uh, Camillus reproductions are kind of uh, rare and sought after in their, own, in their own right. So anyway, by the eighth year of the reproductions, 1989, Camillus produced the R1128, which was the original Hunter again in the Coco Bolo handles. So let me show you a picture of the original knife, and then we'll get out the reproduction. Okay, well, sorry for the long lead-in, but I just wanted to put that into context because it's a reproduction and there's some history behind it. And frankly, you know, you, you don't usually get that. You get a lot of, oh, this knife feels good in my hand, I like the color, look, it cuts paper kind of stuff. <laughs> so here's the um, nice retro box that it came in. And you can see it says Remington UMC, Remington Trademark, Remington UMC 1R1128. Remington Arms Company, back when they were in Bridgeport, Connecticut. When I got this knife, I don't believe it had ever been taken out of the paper. I have, of course, and I've rewrapped it, but it was wrapped in such a way that it looked like it, it was wrapped at the factory. So it maybe has been sitting in this box for 31 years. It comes wrapped in tissue paper. There's also a little bit of information here about, you know, it isn't really too helpful. It's one of these things where it's like, hey, congratulations, you're such a great, smart person for buying this knife. <laughs> You've got impeccable taste, sir. Uh, the hand, blade is 440 stainless, Rockwell hardness 56 to 59, uh, brass liners, Coco Bolo wood, which is the great thing about this. Um, Camillus unfortunately used synthetic materials for most of these reproductions. All the bone, bone handle ones were Delrin. Uh, that's what really liked about this knife is that it was true to the original in the materials. Now, isn't that a beautiful knife? As we look at this knife, I want you to bear in mind that um, I got this delivered to me for $43. You know, a lot of times on this channel, I show some kind of esoteric knives, knives that may be kind of hard to get your hands on. These are not. You can go on eBay any day of the week and find half a dozen of these for sale. And usually you can buy them in the 50, maybe even sub $50 range. Um, they're not all perfect. Uh, this one is really good, 
but be careful they're not all created equal um, there's some have some gapping some have some issues you know around the uh, lanyard hole um, some the bullet shield may not be fit too well um, none of them have great blade centering probably particularly on that spay but all in all it's a great knife and um, you know 31 years, uh, yeah, you're, you may get one, it's a little tarnished. Uh, you may need to shine it up, polish it up a little bit, but when you do, this is what you get. So uh, what we're looking at here is a four and a half inch closed swell center regular jack, you know, a hunter or large trapper. It's thick, it's heavy, uh, but it's substantial. Uh, in addition to authentic Cocobola thick wood covers, I mean, look how great those are. Uh, you've got nickel silver, a nickel silver bolster here. It's, it's bareheaded, but back here you have a brass um, lanyard tube and uh, brass liners, stainless steel blade and tools on this one. Now look at the fit of this knife. Uh, look at the build quality of this knife. I mean, hats off to Camillus on, on this one in particular anyway. Uh, the shield is laid in there beautifully. The pins are all flush. I think we had one right here that was a little shy. Yeah, right there. Very smooth transitions. Wonderful. So, um, there actually were two runs of this knife. Uh, the first run, you have actual pins uh, in line here like this. They had a problem with the wood splitting, so they had to stop production and make some changes. And what they ended up doing was um, gluing on the second run's handles, putting faux pins at, uh, at an angle here, like one here and one here. Um, but this is the first run with the true actual pins, and I wanted this run because this is the way the original was. The original had the pins aligned uh, in that manner. So here's the main blade. There are half stops on this knife. The action is very smooth. It's, it's light. I would say the spring tension is a little light but it makes it really easy to open and close. Um, it's got kind of a, uh, I don't know, kind of a machine finish, like a satin finish. Uh, this one came with very good edges. And I think the thing that um, Camillus really got right with these reproductions is the tang stamps are great. The, you know, I collect these old uh, Remingtons and um, this tang stamp is proper. I can show it to you. Anyway, it's uh, it's the Remington UMC in a circle with the made in uh, to one side and USA to the other. And um, that's a, a tang stamp from, hmm, I may have to put it up on the screen there, 1924 to 1933. So that's appropriate. And on the back, just like the original, you've got the model number, R1128. Now the R for Remington was indicated a folding knife. Um, the, the 112 in the middle is the pattern and 8 was their code for the handle material, 8 being cocoa bowl of wood. So that's the main blade. Um, I am probably have to put the specs up on the screen as far as uh, the overall length, the blade length. I don't have that in my mind. And then the spay blade is just like the original where they put the blade etch. They've got this great gold Remington trademark blade etch. Again, good edges on these. They're very sharp. This one has a little secondary tang stamp like Remington's often did, which is just says Remington UMC in a circle. No made in USA around it. There we go. And then I'm not sure if there was anything on the back of these uh, spay blades on these, or maybe it was the model number again. But what they've chosen to do with the reproductions is to put the date, which I think is just brilliant. So you can't pass it off as, you know, hey, look, it's an original. And you know when, when your reproduction was made, what year it is, 
nice brass liners just like the original again I just think it's uh, I was delighted with it absolutely delighted with it I, I think these are highly underrated now some differences between this and the original well uh, the steel the steel is you know 440 stainless as we said the original would have been carbon um, I think the shape of the handle uh, you know we start off here with some rounding but then it pretty well goes to kind of a flattish handle I think the originals were much cheekier they had much more of a radius to them um, and then the only other thing that that I could come up with was uh, the joints if you read some old ads and I had some pictures but I couldn't find them of an original they made a big deal out of the joints being square and flush and what that meant was when this was in the closed position uh, the tang was flush with the bolster here there, there was no uh, indentation here and it was also flush at the half stop so you couldn't get any dirt sticks whether they you know hair blood in there whatever really cool and I don't know how they did that so if you like these they're still out there they're not hard to get I think they're great value again you know be careful because they're not all created equal some have a little better build quality than others some maybe shouldn't have left the factory the way they did um, you know so if the price is too good to be true maybe you're getting one with a, a noticeable flaw or something but Camillus made a bunch of, of um, Remington reproductions they did it all the way up from you know 1982 all the way up to 2007 when they went out of business then Baron Sons made them for 10 years and since 2018 Buck Knives out of uh, Idaho have been making them now they long ago ran out of original patterns so they start started creating knives that you know never really existed as Remington bullet knives you know different patterns different cover materials and things like that but they're they're still cool knives and uh, something you know fun to collect so I hope you've enjoyed that I know I'm going to enjoy this knife as always, thanks for watching, and have fun collecting.